Today we talk about hyperbolas. Yesterday we did ellipses. Today's hyperbolas. A hyperbola is a set of all points whose distance from two foci have a constant difference. Yesterday with ellipses, it was whose uh, distance from two foci have a constant sum. So my question to you is, um, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, do you have to uh, memorize that for the test? No, you don't. Uh, do you get any notes on the test? Yes. yes. Do you put them together or do I put them together? You put them together, okay? And again, well, can you have examples on the test? No. If you'd like to, uh, if you like to cut these out, or you want me to give you new uh, notes that you can write on, that's fine. I don't, I don't know how it is that you want to do it, but I, I'm willing to try to help out, okay? All right. That said, uh, if we talk a little bit about the shape, you can see that from yesterday we had d1 and d2. If we take d1 plus d2, that's going to be the same as d3 plus d4. Uh, the distances from the two foci sum to the same number. Well, today, uh, the black uh, curve, that represents a hyperbola. And these black dots are the foci. The distances that a point is from a foci, um, those subtract to a constant number. Okay, So their differences are the same. Okay, So that's the only, only real you know, kind of big deal about the equation. Uh, so the equation is going to look like this. X minus H quantity squared over A squared minus Y minus K quantity squared over B squared. You want to guess what the center is? HK. I remember I unfortunately I had to teach myself this stuff. I, I was in a uh, my teacher told me I shouldn't take the math class the school offered my sophomore year, but I should kind of take one on my own and then move ahead. And so that's what I did. And I had to teach myself uh, conic sections and whatnot. And this was the most helpful piece is when I did this next step. Once I, I, I did the center, I was like, how do I make how do I make this stuff easier? And I decided to start making a box. So I'm going to make a box, and the box is going to be stretched horizontally, and it's going to be stretched vertically. How many units do you think I stretch horizontally? A units. So you're going to make a box, and you go sideways, A. How many units, how many units do you think you go vertically? You go B units vertically. And that'll make your box. Once you have your box, the rest is easy. The vertices lie on the side of the box. If I move horizontally, does that change the H value or the K value? So it'll be H plus or minus A and then K. The length of the transverse axis, the transverse axis is really the segment between the two vertices. What do you think that length is? If I go A units in each direction, 2A. That's okay. This type of uh, shape, a hyperbola, has asymptotes. Once you draw the box, you know the vertices, and then the asymptotes go through the corners of the box. See, I like my box idea now. The actual graph will start at a vertice, and then it will kind of follow along with the asymptotes. And that's how you make your graph. Now, are the asymptotes points or are they lines? They're lines. And if we were going to write an equation for a line, what are the two things that you need in order to write an equation for a line? Slope and 
a point on the line. Both of these lines go through a very special point on the graph. What point do these lines both go through? H, K. Very good, Lolly. Everybody else has said zero, zero. And Lolly knows that it won't always be zero, zero, right? Now she's embarrassed because she's famous on YouTube. People will just be calling her. Okay. Uh, the slope, look at the slope. What is the rise for the box? What's the run? B over A. And one is positive and the other is negative. And then when you write an equation for a line, it's of the form y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. The last piece is the foci. The foci are points that sit on the inside of these curves. Anybody want to guess how far they sit from the center? C units. Good job, B. Robin. C units from the center. So again, that will affect the H value. So it'll be H plus or minus C and then K. Those are my foci. Now you need to know how to find C. How did we find C yesterday? A squared minus B squared equals C squared. How do you think you find C today? A squared plus B squared is C squared. Pythagorean theorem. How's that? Everybody good? All right. Let's do the uh, other one. If we switch, it's going to be the, uh, so this one opens up horizontally. This one will open up vertically. And its equation is y minus k quantity squared uh, over a squared uh, minus x minus h quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. Now, yesterday I told you that a squared was always greater than b squared. That was for ellipses. If you look at this right now, yeah, question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's kind of an important part. <laughs> we have an equation with no equal sign. Very interesting. All right. Um, so today we have a squared plus b squared. Does a squared have to be bigger than b squared? No. A squared could be bigger or smaller. So what is the big difference between these two equations? Doesn't matter whether a is bigger or not than b. What's the what's the difference? Okay. Subtraction. So here x is positive, here x is negative. So when it goes horizontal, x is positive when it goes vertical y is positive that's the important indicator that you need to see in determining whether it goes up or down so let's do that this one's going to go up and down i have a center at hk and it looks like for this one it's stretched a units in the y direction and b units in the x direction The vertices will sit on the top and the bottom because y is positive. If they sit a units from the center, that's going to change the h value or the k value. The center is HK, and I move up A and down A. Will that change the H value or the K value? K value. So I have H, and I have K plus or minus A. 
The length of the transverse axis is the distance between the two vertices, which is 2, 8. I can draw my asymptotes. Lots of fun. I'll put my hyperbola on the top and on the bottom, just like so. The asymptotes, again, you need a slope and a point on the line. The point on the line is still HK. However, what's the slope? Yep, in this case, it's plus or minus A over B. And you're still going to use then your equation for your line. The foci sit C units from the center. And that's going to change the K values, the location location is H, and then K plus or minus C. Sweet. We are going to do two examples in class instead of four. One previous year is six. So we're going to try to make things simpler for you. Second of all, uh, the first one is going to be centered at zero, zero. The second one is going to be centered at a shifted location. So let's look at example A. We will not do B. I want to identify the center, the vertices, the length of the transverse axis, the foci, and the asymptotes. What is the center? Zero, zero. Sweet. I mark it. Going to make my box. How many units do I go in the x direction? Two. How many units in the y direction? Five. And if I make my box, that's the, you know, it's kind of the general layout of how things are going to look. Anybody remember Tanner Bell Richard? Tanner did not like that I called it a box, and he decided to own it, so he named them the Tanner Rectangles. So when I would ask what you draw now, he would say, you draw a Tanner Rectangle. So he wants something in mathematics named after him. So Shout out to you, Tanner, in case you're watching my videos. I know you probably are. I'm going to draw my asymptotes. And now you have to make the crucial decision. Do the vertices go on the top and bottom or on the left and the right? How come? Because X is positive and Y is negative. So it goes on the side, left and right. But now you know, right? Okay, so the vertices are located at negative 2, 0 and at positive 2, 0. So therefore, what is the length of the transverse axis? It's 4. I can now draw the shape. This is a very wide hyperbola. Some of you are going to say it sits on the top and the bottom, and that's natural because that's where you kind of want to draw them because you don't want to draw them that wide. I like to make it a little bit more confined of a shape. What value do I have to find in order to identify the foci? So I do a squared minus or plus. So I get c squared is equal to 29. So therefore c is equal to plus or minus, I'm sorry, just the root of 29. Because this is a distance, which is about five and a half. And so I go five and a half units, three, four, five. So I have one focus. And then another focus point right there. So I've got two foci, five and a half. And that's from the center. So my location will be zero. And then, whoops, I'm sorry. 
plus or minus the root of 29 and 0. And for the asymptotes, what are the two things that I need? Slope and a point on the line. Point on the line is easy, 0, 0. Look at my box. What's my slope? 5 over 2. So plus or minus 5 over 2. I'm going to put that into an equation for a line. Y minus Y1 equals plus or minus 5 halves times X minus X1. What happens to the zeros? Just go away. Y equals plus or minus 5 halves X. That is my equation for the two asymptotes. What do you think? Not too bad, huh? Pretty similar to the ellipses. Just got to draw your tanner rectangles. B Rod and thinks I'm funny. Nobody else does. Whatever. Okay, let's uh, do B on the other side, and then you can have time to work. I can't graph B right now. What do I have to do? Nice job, B Roadie. Oh, there's Jayaki. So we have a center, we have vertices, we have length of the transverse axis. Yep, I will. You have foci, and then you have uh, asymptotes. I try to decide what's essential for your learning moving forward and what's not. And the fact is, is that you won't need to graph many of these as we move forward. So I don't see why I'm having you memorize stuff that you won't be asked to really recall in the future. That said, next year when you take calculus, you have to remember that when you take the derivative of f times g, you get f prime g my, or plus g prime f. I don't give that to you. You have to remember it. Why? Because you have to recall it all of the time. So, and second semester, you're going to be given a fair amount of notes on the test because there's a lot of formulas. I'll share that with you in private. Okay, I'm not going to say it. All right. The center, anybody want to name it? Is it negative 2, 1, or is it 1, negative 2? Which is it? There you go. It's okay. So I'm going to go six units in the y direction. So I'm, you know, if I make this a ten by ten, that should be enough. Kels, do you remember this stuff? Make a tan a rectangle. We go positive one, negative two. That's my center. How many units do I go in the x direction? Dose. How about the y direction? Looks like I have a little bit oblong tanner rectangle. That's all right. I'm going to draw my asymptotes. By the way, when you make your graphs on your homework, you can make them large. You don't have to make them super tiny. You, you do have a fair amount of paper on you. So, uh, Do my vertices sit on the top and bottom or the right and left? 
Top and bottom because Y is positive. So it's at the top and at the bottom. So what are the location of my vertices? Very good, J. Aki. 1, 4, and 1, negative 8. The length of the transverse axis is the distance between the two vertices. It doesn't. In order to find the foci, what value do you have to find? C. Do I do A squared plus B squared or A squared minus B squared? Plus. 36 plus 4 is 40. C squared is 40. So C is very good. Two roots of 10. As I move two roots of 10 from the center, is that going to change the H value or the K value? The K value. So my K value is negative 2. So my foci will be located at 1 and the negative 2 plus or minus two roots of 10. Finally, what two things do I need for an asymptote? Slope and a point on the line. What is the point on the line? One, negative two. It's my center. As far as my slope, I find that by just looking at my box. What's the rise of my box? Six. What's the run? So six over two is three. So it's uh, plus or minus three is going to be my slope. So as I write my equation, I have y plus 2 is equal to plus or minus 3 times x minus 1. And that's it. Hyperbolas. They are a beautiful thing. You're ready for an assignment. And I applaud your enthusiasm, folks. So, the one that says 9.3 right here, that's the one you can write down. Yes, B. Rodder. To, you know, you're so right in slope intercept form? No, because you would have to do it for the plus and the minus, right? If you'd like to, you can. Well, right, but so what I would do is I would actually graph the hyperbola and the ellipses or a, and the asymptotes and see if it would come up with what I had to kind of verify my answer. I'm so glad you're all caught up in math. So you're right here, folks, on uh, 9.3, page 751, 5 through 9, and 9.4, page 760, number 9 through 11. Tomorrow, you got to have your game faces on. Tomorrow's not an easy lesson.